global clinicians, this is Ali Nese and I come to you from UAE, United Arab Emirates in Dubai, standing right here next to the Caliph Towers, the tallest building in the world at the present time uh, until the next one shows up. And I wanted to do a quick tutorial here for you as the last leg of my tour here in the Middle East comes to an end. I spent last week in uh, Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, where I did a uh, number of presentations, a couple of lectures and a hands-on presentation with the, at, the, uh, at the fourth international conference of the King Abdulaziz University uh, Faculty of Dentistry, which was really a big successful conference. Lots of attendance, very well organized. And I had the pleasure of being invited to give a presentation there. And uh, we also did a workshop on the introduction of the end sequence express file as well as the system uh, for some of the attendants which is a new uh, uh, system that is now available in this region of the world and uh, uh, I wanted to kind of share with you a quick uh, little tutorial on uh, one of the cases that I showed as an introduction to the system uh, which has been kind of developed by Rewald Endo and is now uh, available uh, in this area so without further ado let's uh, take a look at this system however if you want to take a uh, you know uh, have another little experience of my uh, trip down there in Jeddah and a little bit here in Dubai stick around at the end of the tutorial so I can share with you a little video of what I captured during my extraordinary visit to this uh, wonderful land and so many kind and uh, lovely people so without further ado let's go inside and talk about the endo sequence express instrumentation and obturation system okay folks let's take a quick look at an anterior tooth demo using the endo sequence express file the endo sequence express file is a com combination of simplicity efficiency and a minimally invasive preparation because of the fact that it's a constant o4 preparation it uses the same concept and idea as its US or North American kind of a um, equivalent, which is uh, endo sequence as well as the ESX. So I'd like to once again emphasize that the endo sequence express is not available in North America and it's only available uh, the rest of the world. But much like its sister file in North America, it uses the same concept of synchronicity for instrumentation and bonding for obturation. The idea is that you need to get a master file with a constant preparation uh, size 04 taper down to the apex your full working length and then from there you have a matching paper point and a matching gutta percha cone that is also coated with bioceramic silanated particles that will bond then to your bioceramic sealer which will then in turn also chemically bond to the dentin therefore you end up with a monoblock that is retreatable because the center core is gutta percha and easily retreatable. So that is really the concept of both endo sequence and ESX, which is now extended to this the endo sequence express. To speak about the file itself, what you have here is a constant tapered O4 preparation file with a safety tip and a triangular cross section, which makes the file fairly efficient in terms of cutting. It has enhanced chip space, so it can capture a good amount of cutting that you can then remove using the appropriate size motion. You have your and calibrations and a stopper and you have ISO collars to designate the different uh, size files that you're dealing with here. It's important to understand that this file is different than its sister file in North America in that it's not electro polished, it doesn't have alter alternating contact points and compared to the ESX it doesn't have a booster tip. So there is a difference manufacturing here. However the system is arranged in uh, typical sizing almost like the endo sequence which is sizes 23 50 in 04 taper. These files can be obtained in assorted sizes, anywhere from 20 through 50, as I mentioned, or they could be purchased in procedural packs to correspond with the technique that it comes with. And the procedural packs are of three files each. Uh, with a small, you have sizes 20 through 30. With a medium, you have 30 through 40. And with large, you have sizes 40 through 50. So these procedural packs basically tell you it's a clinical technique that allows you to go from uh, getting a size 1502 uh, canal and then instrument using three files to complete the preparation. And the technique can be summarized in the following way. Once you get a size 1502 hand file down to the apex, then what you have, you can triage to either a size small, medium, or large procedural packs. And the way you would know which procedural pack you need for a given canal, it's basically determined by the amount of engagement that your 1502 is experiencing on its way down to the apex. If you have significant amount of engagement, then you need to open a, a small procedural pack, which is sizes 20 through 30, 
O4 taper, constant taper, and the sequence express files. If you had moderate engagement and you're dealing with a procedural pack medium, which is sizes 30 through 40, and you had minimal engagement, you're dealing with a size 40 through 50 large procedural pack. So once you open the uh, the corresponding pack for that given canal or case that you're dealing with, then you would use a crown down approach, which means that you're actually using the largest file in the series first uh, through either a rhythm motion uh, or an SSC motion. Now, of course, the SSC motion, most of you guys probably already know, is the single stroke and clean, which is um, the motion in which you engage the dentin and then you remove the file from the canal and you wipe the tip and then proceed to engage again with the next subsequent smaller size. So each file engages once and then you go to the next smaller size and to the next smaller size and when you reach the uh, the last, the smallest size file in the pack, then you go back and start from the beginning. So you do these cycles of large to the small using a single stroke to the uh, engagement and removing the file and then going to the next one. And this way, you work your way down the canal until you reach the full working length with your first file. You can also use the other motion, which is the rhythm motion that is used with the endo sequence, and that is the use of three strokes to engagement, and then followed by removing the file and wiping it, and then moving to the next size smaller. Uh, you may ask, well, why to do each one? Well, you, the rhythm motion, uh, no question about it, is a little bit more uh, efficient because you're taking three strokes, and this is done in this way. So three st strokes to engagement, like this, and then you remove the file, and then you wipe it and you go on to the next smaller sizes. So uh, the rhythm motion is more efficient, however it puts a little bit more strain on the file. So while these files are um, designed to be used a single time in the canal, uh, using, the, uh, using a single stroke and clean will allow you to do three uses out of them because it doesn't torque the, uh, the file quite as much. All cases are started pretty much using these two hand files and maybe the uh, the an orifice opener, and then you decide which procedural pack you're going to open, and that's the ones you put on your um, your uh, your setup, and then you go on to do the procedure using crown down. And let's take a look at the um, a case here, which is a size, uh, which is a two lateral incisor here. As you can see, is necrotic and has a fairly large lesion here. And what we do in this case, as usual, uh, we start by a good isolation. Uh, it's important to take a look at the tooth before you isolate it so you don't end up isolating the wrong tooth. Uh, but this is a lateral incisor. It's fairly straightforward. We isolate the tooth with a rubber dam. And then I do my secondary isolation using opal dam, which um, prevents any uh, leakage uh, of curvicular fluid or getting any um, disinfectant into the patient's mouth. We then start using a Rewild Endos Access Kit. I'm using here a saber cut burr, uh, which is a 1557, and uh, uh, it's a cross-cut fissure. Very quickly, uh, we can uh, get access through the enamel into the canal. As usual, I always use the ultrasonic. Here's the E14 D tip to remove the debris that I've generated. I place some silver hypochlorite inside the tooth, and now I'm just using my estimated working length to see what kind of an opening I have, and um, I, then I proceed to uh, to uh, um, to get my working length because it seemed to be fairly open. And this is the um, uh, reading that I get from the apex locator for my, uh, for my length. So then I try to uh, get this um, to a size 15. And you can see that I'm getting a couple of engagements here. And until I move my size 15 to the same working length that my uh, size 10 went to, and then I proceed to confirm this length. Remember that it's an important thing not to just rely on your apex locator and get your apex locator's uh, reading confirmed with once you get a size 15 down there with a radiograph. Because don't forget, you get additional information from the radiograph, which includes the, um, the geometry and the shape of the apical area of the tooth. And in this case, now uh, we know uh, that we had just a little bit of moderate engagement there with the 15, so I'm going to choose a medium procedural pack, and that's a 40 through 30, and I'm using that in a crown down fashion. I'm using SSC here, so it's a single stroke. As I mentioned, you can use the rhythm motion, which would be three strokes to engagement. But by having multiple hand pieces here, this allows me to quickly change the file and not worry about having to do the rhythm motion, which is three strokes, and this way, I really reduce the engagement on my file. 
Uh, and uh, so here you can see I did a couple of rounds already down 40 to 30 and then again 40 down to 30 and by the end of the second round the 30 has reached the apex. So uh, I have uh, my size 30 already at the full working length and I'm just putting a little bit more irrigation in there and I do one final round of 40 uh, and you can see here the next file that went down to the apex here was a size 40. So my 40 has reached the apex already. Once it has reached the apex, then now I'm able to do uh, a little bit of lateral uh, filing with the um, with the same with the file with my master apical file, if you will, and that's just going to cleans the canals and the canal a little bit better circumferentially. Now at the very end, I'm using the ultrasonic to remove all the loose debris. This also helps remove some of the smear layer. Ultrasonics are great in this uh, fashion uh, because they can very effectively and very efficiently um, do this removal of the loose debris. Now it's time to do my final disinfection process, which could be done best using the um, um, negative pressure because it allows me to run a very large volume of full strength hypochlorite here very safely down all the way to the apex. So I'm taking this uh, macro cannula from this negative pressure system, uh, which is the endovac, uh, all the way down to the full working length. And now I'm moving uh, with the micro cannula to, uh, and you can see here, this is hypo, full strength hypochlorite is reaching all the way down to the apex, going to the full working length and uh, completely disinfecting the walls that I'm left with in, after my final shaping and uh, prior to ob obturation. So I'm just going to edit a little bit through that process, but I did ran, run a large volume of disinfectant through this tooth. And now I'm fitting my size 40, which matches my cone, and confirming that it is fully seated to the full working length. Now, once I have uh, confirmed my seating to the full working length, I locked, locked the, uh, the, the gutta percha uh, to that length, and now I'm taking some uh, biceramic sealer, some BC sealer, and putting it on my master file and seating the file to the full working length, which ensures that I'm coating the canal wall completely uh, with the biceramic material. And now I've coated the cone in the same way as well, and then I seat the cone all the way to the full working length, confirming that it's fully seated because I had locked the, uh, the gutta percha with my locking pliers. And now that locked area had reached the reference point, therefore it says that it is um, um, that it's fully seated. If there is room on the side of it, and this tooth from the pre-op radiograph, you could, just, you could see that it's a little bit um, uh, more oval. The, if there's a little bit of more room, you can put in an additional size 20 or 25 got a percha cone next to it so that you will end up having a little bit more uh, of a denser fill in the coronal area of the preparation. So now I've seared off uh, um, right at the orifice level and I'm using a number 10 shoulder plugger to condense the gutta percha at that level, followed by a number nine uh, focused at the margins of the gutta percha as it meets the dentin. So I'm trying to condense that so I can have gutta percha pretty much all over the surface without any uh, sealer showing, uh, showing up. Now I'm using the ultrasonic with water to very quickly sear, uh, remove the excess sealer in the chamber and then drying it off. And you can see very quickly you can end up with a very clean chamber. And at this point you can uh, proceed to, um, to fill the restoration using uh, uh, your restoration of choice to put the core material, whatever you want, because you have only have got a percha there, as you can see, the sealer surface is covered. In North America, uh, endodontists usually don't restore the tooth, so I'm just putting cavity in there and referring the patient, sending the patient back to uh, his referring source to restore the tooth. And here it shows the final fill of this case, and you can see that we have a fairly dense, a nice uh, fill um, to the apex. And the key here is finishing a tooth like this, which is a necrotic tooth, uh, in one visit requires that kind of instrumentation and a large apical preparation that I have to a size 40. And the use of biceramics are also very helpful in the sense that it allow me, it allows me to have uh, that uh, high pH material that is chemically bonded both to the dentin as well as to the, uh, to the gutta percha. Now, uh, this tooth has, was done about three months ago, followed up with the patient, and the patient's doing very well. I'm going to have in the future a follow-up of it um, uh, down down the line for you guys to view but the patient's doing very well okay as you saw the endo sequence express is a fairly straightforward simple and yet not simplistic uh, method by which you can instrument uh, canals and obturate them using the bioceramic technology 
So this system is now available internationally and in certain given areas, so you may want to check uh, with your dealers. However, to go back to, uh, to my trip to the 4th International Congress of the King Abdulaziz University, I can only tell you that it was a really world-class uh, level of a conference. Lots of great speakers and a great organization uh, and wonderful people who attended. Very attentive uh, group of students as well as other uh, um, professionals that attended. And the trip started uh, pretty rocky for me because I had to get a visa uh, to go to Saudi Arabia. And I had some, uh, you know, I had, it kind of hit some snags uh, for me to, to kind of get it. And I actually, I ended up getting my passport right at the same day as I was supposed to fly back. Uh, and then from that on, everything just kind of happened. Uh, it was a very close call. So I'm just going to, you know, stop talking and share with you the video that I captured during this time. And uh, I will see you at the next tutorial, but we will probably talk about uh, the use of the Endo Sequence Express in a molar or something like that. In the meantime, for Real World Endo, I'm Ali Nasseh, and I hope you found this uh, tutorial helpful. اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان لا اله الا أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله <تصفيق> Ahlan wa sahlan bil.